Hello, hi everyone. Welcome back to the channel. So today in this video lecture, we'll be solving this problem prime number. So in this problem, we basically have a number n, integer number, and we are supposed to check whether it is prime or not. So a prime number is the one which is actually divisible by one and itself. Okay, so for example, two, three, seven, five, they are all prime numbers. You know, eleven, thirteen. So that means a prime number has factors only one and itself, one and n. These are the factors of a prime number. So, in order to check whether n is a prime or not, we can check for its factors. How to check for the factors? The factors will lie in this range from two to n minus one. That means, if any number in this range divides this n, that means this n is a is is not a prime number otherwise it's a prime number because n will not be divisible by any number greater than n okay and uh, so the range in which we need to check for the divisors of n would be from 2 to n minus 1 and hence all we have to do the brute force way to solve this problem is start picking up numbers from 2 up to n minus 1 and check for every number whether that number divides n or not so we'll also have to handle a special case. The special case is when n is 1. So when n is 1, it's not a prime number. And when n is 2, it is a prime number. So if n is equal equals to 1, we'll return 0 right from here because 1 is not a prime number. And if n is equal equals to 2, then we'll return one because two is a prime number okay now let's iterate over the range from two to n minus one and check if this n is divisible by this i or not if it is divisible by i that means it's not a prime number so we return zero right from here Otherwise, at the end, turn 1. So actually, we can delete this condition as well because it will be checked right here. So if n is 2, then this loop will not run. We'll simply return 1 right from here. Means 2 will be considered as the prime number. So let's check if it works or not. Let's submit it. Okay, it is giving time limit exceeded. Let's see the constraints. We can see that the expected time complexity for this sol uh, for the solution to this problem is square root of n. Okay, that means we cannot submit it in big of n time complexity. So we'll have to improve upon this solution. The expected time complexity is square root t of n. So in order to solve it in the given constraints, let's observe some things about the numbers. Let's take a number, let's say 36. 36 can be written as any number, let's say z, can be written as multiplication of two factors x, y, x and x into y. So 36 can be written as 1 into 36. It can also be written as 2 into 18 2 into 18 and 3 into 12 3 into 12 and 4 into 9 4 into 9 it can also be written as 6 into 6 6 into 6 so it can be written as 9 into 4 9 into 4 so basically we are iterating over every number so let's like going with the previous approach start from 2 move to 3 4 5 6 like that and we have 9 into 4 so we are just checking for those we are actually writing down only those numbers only those factors which actually divides this 36 so 
6 divides 36, 9 divides 36. Now 12 into 3. 12 into 3. Move to the next one. That is uh, 18 into 2. 18 into 2. And then we have this 36 into 1. 36 into 1. So leave these factors 1 and 36. You can see that in this range from 2 to this point 12, we can see that here 2 into 18 is actually repeated here as 18 into 2. 3 into 12 is repeated here as 12 into 3. So 4 into 9 as 9 into 4. So we can see that the second part is the mirror of image of the first one. You know? So that means even if we check for the first part, part it is enough for us we do not need to consider this second part you know we don't need to consider this that means we just start iterating from this 2 and we can move up to this 6 and this 6 is nothing but actually the square root of this number 36 right that means for any number n for any number n start iterating from 2 and keep picking up numbers up to root of n root of n and re now repeat the same procedure which we did earlier so here in this code all we have to do is to change this n to qrt of n that's all let us see if it works it is working Oh, it's not working. Let's submit it. So, all the test cases are passed. That means this is a correct solution. It is accepted and it is within the time limits. And space complexity is also constant because we are not using any extra data structure or anything like that to store any data. So, we can see that we are solving this problem with root of n time complexity and constant space complexity so i hope uh, you enjoyed the video that's all for this video uh, hit the like button if you like it and uh, probably in the future i will be uh, starting sta i will be starting to upload more videos on dsa uh, and other programming concepts so that's all for this video bye bye Good.